الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي رحمه في الله continue on in our brief study and commentary of Nawaf al-Islam by Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala as was commented upon by Dr. Saleh Saleh rahmatullahi alayhi and we mentioned in the last sitting, the fifth naqid min nawaqid al-Islam, and that is, من أبغض شيء مما جاء به رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وذو عمل به كفرا. And the fifth one was, whoever despises something that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم came with, even if they practice it, has disbelieved. And actually, we covered the sixth one. Asad is min istahza bi shayim min min din rasuli sallallahu alaihi wasallam o tuwabilla o ikabihi kafara wadilil kulo taala kulo billahi wa ayati wa rasuli kuntum tustahziyun la tadru kad kafartum ba di imanikum. The sixth nahib in the waqt Islam. Hafidhukum Allah. Is mocking any part of Islam or any of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's names and attributes, or any of His signs, or anything from His religion. The person who does that has disbelieved, or to ridicule the punishments and the rewards of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Then this person has disbelieved. And the evidence for this is the verse where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Say," and He said this addressing to the Prophet sallallahu to address uh, those people who had ridiculed the companions. Rabbi Allahu Taalaanum Ajmaeen. He said, "Say, is it Allah and His signs and His messenger?" that you were ridiculing make <coughs> make no or you're not excused you have disbelieved after you had iman after you had faith was it Allah and his signs and his messenger that you were mocking make no excuse you have disbelieved after you had believed and so this shows us the seriousness of taking the religion serious. That doesn't mean a Muslim can't enjoy their time and laugh and joke and, and enjoy as other people enjoy activities and so forth. However, when it comes to the religion, do everything possible to cut and close the door so that way you don't fall into this grave, grave, grievous sin which will cause a person to leave the fold of Islam. And <clears throat> what also further illustrates is in the tafsir of this ayah, where it illustrates that this ayah was revealed regarding some individuals who were traveling and they were speaking and ridiculing the companions of the Prophet ﷺ during their travels. But they, you know, for them it was a very light matter. And it was something, it shows how easy it is to fall into it because as was the custom of the Arabs and as is the customs with many peoples, that when you travel, often you, and especially camping and things like this, you tell stories. You tell stories and sometimes, and those are times when it's easy to backbite. It's easy to slander people, and it's easy to just relax your speech and say things that perhaps you didn't mean. And in this case, they were ridiculing, making jokes about the companions of Radi Allahu Tanainu Majmaeen. And then the word got out, and it came back to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they came. And the Prophet 
read this verse to them. He, he knew about this situation and they, you know, it says that one of the individuals was holding on to the camel of the Prophet ﷺ, holding on to its, uh, its uh, reins and trying, and the Prophet ﷺ was just going in one direction, you know, basically the man was holding on, begging and pleading with the Prophet ﷺ and saying, O oh Messenger of Allah, you know, we, we just said this, it, it was just uh, it was just a joke, it was just speech that we say while we're traveling, you know, it, it's just uh, common speech that people do when they travel. And the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't uh, turn to the man, so the man was very upset and, and crying and sad and, and so forth. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the ayat, in the last part of the ayat, that you have disbelieved after your Iman, letting us know that they were believers up until that point. But then, due to the grievousness of making fun of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs or those aspects of the religion and loving the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an aspect of creed. It's a part of the Muslim's creed. It's a part of the creed of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. That we love the messengers, uh, we love the companions of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. And that we don't ridicule them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tasubu ashabi. He said, do not curse my companions. So this sin was pertinent to the deen and as if they were ridiculing the deen because that's a very big part of the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah that it's a pillar of uh, in the creed a very important part of the creed and the madhab and the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah is that they hold the Sahaba in the highest esteem and they love them all of them and they say when they are mentioned or <clears throat> you know in remembering the Sahaba because the Prophet loved them and Allah chose them to be his companions so this is a part of creed and those who differ with that who uh, speak ill of the companions they are either one of two types of people either they have left the fold of Islam because they hate that which we are ordered to love, you know, loving the companions, or maybe they dislike particular individuals amongst them for affairs of the dunya. And this is just means that these people are despised, <coughs> alhamdulillah, innovators. So, either way, the status of the person who ridicules or alhamdulillah or does not have love for the companions of the Prophet وسلم, that this is a type of hypocrisy and it's a way in uh, belittling the religion of Islam because the religion of Islam was transferred or it was transmitted by the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'een Another point I want to mention that some of the scholars they mention also with regards to the signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is that regarding the ayat uh, Shari'a which could be the verses of the Qur'an or things related to the deen. And, and that is those people who ridicule the uh, uh, the signs of the religion. Meaning those people, for example, some people, they detest the hijab. 
even amongst Muslims, that they, or they, they ridicule the sisters that wear proper hijab and, and wear a very big hijab, which is proper because it is actually concealing that which they are supposed to conceal. And if they're doing even a, a better job, then of course, if they're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're coming closer to Allah because it's an act of ibad, it's an act of worship. So then when, therefore, when a person ridicules the hijab, if they ridicule it as a sign of the religion, then they've disbelieved. If they ridicule it because of that particular person, they don't, they have some issue with that particular individual, but they're not actually ridiculing the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are sinful. And so this is why it's very important to be very cautious about joking about the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About, for example, and I remember listening to one of the Mashaykh in Riyadh, Sheikh Ali Shubul, ta'ala, and he was mentioning about uh, and explaining this about how uh, here in, in Saudi Arabia that some of the people, the people who are not so religious, that they will ridicule the hijab and say they're like tents. Oh, she's wearing a tent. You know, they have certain things they say in Arabic which is ridiculing. And so then he gave us this, he gave this tafsil, this details about this issue. And likewise with the beard, that some people, they, they, it's a personal thing. They don't really like beards or whatever the situation is, but they have to be cautious and not to ridicule beards and detest it because it's a sign of the religion of Islam amongst men, that the men are ordered to grow the beard. That it's an order, and every time there's a commandment in the Sharia, then this is a <coughs> the the asal of that command is that it al emri fi the wujub is that this issue is now a uh, illustrating that it's an obligation. So therefore, when you ridicule something that's an obligation, an act of worship, then this is how you're ridiculing the signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His Deen, and fall into disbelief. So therefore, you have to be very careful about that issue. And it shows you that it's even a sticky point to even try to come with too many details about trying to distinguish when ridiculing the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ridiculing uh, this particular individual. This is a very uh, sticky matter. It's not a very easy uh, matter to distinguish between the two. So it shows you how serious it is, that it's a serious sin, you know, in, in, in the, the smallest uh, way that you can consider it is that it's a major sin. Uh, because you're ridiculing someone who's a believer. But if you're ridiculing the actual aspect of growing the beard or what have you, then, you know, this is, you're ridiculing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and you have therefore left the fold of Islam. So it's very, very serious and very dangerous. Uh, and to, we should do our utmost to avoid this, this sin. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.